Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're gonna to be talking about Formula One and why it's possibly the most competitive team sport in the world today. So I want you to sit back, enjoy the video, let's go. So this video is basically for my, you know, the, the racing fans out there, all the racing junkies and the people that love Formula One and probably just love sports, competitive sports, you know, in, in general. So let me just give you a quick background on my whole history of Formula One. Now, a number of years ago, probably five, six years ago, I really started getting into racing and I actually wanted to have my own Formula One team, but you know, due to the fact that I didn't have enough capital to do that and, you know, it just wasn't going to happen. But I ended up learning a lot about the industry and I learned a lot about the cars. And at the time I was living in Italy, so I really got fascinated with Ferrari and the whole, you know, um, a, a, a team Scuderia, as they call it. And I really enjoyed Ferrari and I loved, you know, the, you know, the way their cars look. So it's ultimately easy for me to gravitate towards their Formula One team. So I started learning a lot about the sport and I found out some really amazing things. So it turns out, Formula One is the most technologically advanced sport in the in, on the entire planet. First reason is because in Formula One you're dealing with machines and you're dealing with a lot of technology. You're, you're coming up, you know, you know, these different teams and engineers are coming up with new ways to come up with new, new downforce to be able to go faster, making the cars lighter and be able to move quicker around corners. So there's so much trickery, let's say sorcery, that needs to take place to really make these cars perform well. Now the challenge about Formula One is that Formula One is the formula, which basically is the set of requirements that is basically placed upon the different constructors like Ferrari, Mercedes, Renault, uh, Red Bull and others that they have to meet for a specific season. So each season, these cars, these teams are having to modify their vehicles in order to perform up to par you know, as the, coming, as the season comes forward so they, you know, they can meet all these specific regulations. And each year, you know, they're coming up with new innovative things. And the idea behind that is to make the sport, the sport more engaging, to constantly challenge the teams, and it forces the teams to be able to innovate, which also means that if, if you're a team and you're doing really well, it allows you to attract sponsors and different things like this. It can help you really, you know, bump up your, you know, your, let's say, the way your cars can perform uh, when you get to the circuit, when the season starts. Now, generally in Formula One, they're about 20, they're about 20 to 22 races, although the sport is looking to add more races. Like, for example, now they're looking at, they're thinking about adding a circuit in Saudi Arabia, but that's something that's in the works right now. That's something that they're hoping that they can do. So Formula One is a really, really cool sport as far as that. There are many different interlocking facets. Now, the drivers are really important. And first of all, it's very high risk. A lot of drivers have gotten injured in the past and some have even lost their lives because it's very high risk because you have these cars moving at such breakneck speed going into corners. So if they touch each other just for a second, pieces start to fly off. Now, you may be saying to yourself, why are, they, why are the pieces so flimsy? Well, in a lot of these, these cases, these, you know, these automotive makers are using things such as carbon fiber, and all these really so, like light but really rigid pieces so they they, they can knock if, if they touch each other at high speed they're easy to they likely easy to just pop off the car because remember the manufacturers are trying to make sure the car are, are as fast and as light as possible so even when it comes down to the drivers the amount of you know let's say a fitness work that has to go in to be able to meet the qualifications because they have to be a certain weight size when they're in their car and you do a certain like if you do if they do a certain uh like if they do a, a circuit like for instance since in Monza, they actually lose weight. Like they can lose five to 10 pounds of weight or about probably five pounds during that race because inside the vehicle, it's so hot and it takes a lot of hand-eye coordination. So there's so many different things that have, that have to happen well for teams to be successful. You have to have good drivers. You have to have a good vehicle. You have to have good team strategy. You have to have good knowledge of the track and all of these different things just to work in your favor to come out successful. And over history, there have pretty been, there have been three big dominant teams, but really it's been Mercedes and Ferrari. Mercedes has over 16 ch uh, championships. Mercedes has about seven, and then you have Red Bull and others that are right up there. So it's Formula One has so, is multifaceted and it draws a lot of eyeballs around the world. Over 1.7 billion people watch Formula One. I believe it was in 2000 and 18 or so, which and the figures went up. So it, it generates a lot of interest around the world, but it's not like basketball and other, because a lot of these sports, you get to see the athlete's face. So in basketball or in, in golf or whatever it is, you can see the person's face, whereas in Formula One, they have these helmets on. Now that's the one thing. The other thing is that the benefit that the, te that the technology from Formula One that it provides to the automotive industry. For example, a few years ago, they introduced the curse system. Now, what's the curse system? The curse system is simply the fact that these cars, they were able to store up energy in the corners. And what they were trying to do was they were trying to encourage more overtaking. 
because what happened was if a, if a race started and a team that had a good pole position was able to hold it, then the race became predictable. But with the curse system, it allows you to use the, it, it, it stores up the energy and it releases it in these short bursts to allow you to overtake cars that you're directly behind. And it's sort of like a boost, some, something that you'll see in a video game. It boosts the car and it gives them all it, this extra horsepower that allows them to overtake. But you can only do that when you're within a certain striking range and you're behind a vehicle. You just can't use it when you're ahead and then use your use your, your boost. You can't do that. And that's one of the ways that they were able to innovate. A lot of this technology that you see, for example, in modern day Ferraris that are on the road come from Formula One. A lot of the things that you see, because they're the ones that are constantly testing and innovating, the amount of, the, 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 the tens of millions of dollars that these teams are using to research and test and develop different wind tunnels and do all of these different things ultimately translates to the road. So a lot of the things, for instance, when Ferrari was lease, releasing the, you know, their, 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 their flagship model, I think it was the 612 Berlinetta, a lot of the technology that you see comes from what happens in Formula One. Even the fog lights in the back, they got that from their Formula One concept, their vehicle. So Formula One is an, it's, it's a really expansive sport and it goes all the way down to Formula Two and Formula Three. But for me as a car enthusiast, I absolutely love the sport altogether. I think it's really fun and it's going to keep, keep getting bigger. Now certain names are starting to get through who are popular. Certain people like Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel and of course Michael Schumacher. But there's so many other great Formula One athletes out there that we don't pay attention to. But a lot of people out there follow the sport. So if you're a Formula One fan and you enjoy Formula One, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel and leave, and leave a comment below and let us know who your favorite team is. With that being said, this is Charles. I hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.